he wants to progress his argumentation style. He wants to be critiqued. I know it. He's asked me to. And why is he giving him refraction? I think we can. I have flat toy come on here. I have flat toy come on here and explain what refraction is and give some examples. I don't. I must have been teaching on this for eight frigging years. All right. So come on here. Let's let's get this over with. My Number word. Uh, okay. Number one. Just because we have a line of communication with him doesn't mean we're going to be demanding he does anything. Evidence here. Look. You said that refraction doesn't cause things to, to curve like this. Here is an image showing that refraction is causing this straight laser to curve in an arc. All right? <laughs> the way that refraction works is that the light ray is continuously bent in the direction of the more dense medium. So when you have a density gradient, the light is continually bending as it travels along the Earth's curve the earth surface it's continuously bending along that surface towards the more dense medium of air closer to the surface that's science okay cool first of all we don't look through water this would be snell's law uh which is uh shown you doesn't matter if it's uh, water or air uh, uh, yes it does with you with the refraction you require snell's law which means you require two media with boundaries now we've got oh, wait, 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 wait. Now you've you got, I'm still it. talking, and now you okay. see he's got uh, this laser. Can you see the incident uh, incident angle he's pointing <clears throat> this laser at? What would happen if he had to bring it and show it level to the tank? He's pointing it level. No, he's not. He's pointing it at a, looks like a 45 degree angle it's almost. Literally, it's bending in an arc. But, no, but here, the, you know how, I mean, you just, know what refraction... I want to address what you said already. I want to address what you said already about Snell's law, right? The thing that you need for Snell's law is two different coefficients of refraction. Now, in one medium, in air, if you have different densities of air, as we know happens with the pressure gradient, you're going to have different coefficients of, of refraction for each one of those pressure gradients. And that's why <laughs> Snell's law applies in this case. It's the same medium, it's air, it's just changing in density, thus the coefficient of refraction is also changing and causing it to curve towards the more dense air closer to the surface. It's provable. Okay, so this is, no, it's not provable. First of all, I'm gonna tell you, that's not Snell's law. Snell's law requires you to have two different media if you try, nope. yes, two different media. Nope. Go bring up Snell's law, and you can see it for yourself. Anyway, two it's got to do. With, it's got two to do, different coefficients of refraction, no. which can occur in the same air as long as you have different densities. Those count as different mediums if they have different densities. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, Snell's law requires an incident angle and a secondary angle based from the incident angle. You would agree with that. So angle sure. one, incident angle, angle two. Where is that partition to give the second angle? Again, it's the partition as the density gradient changes. It's a continuous, like there's not a smooth partition. It's continuous because it's a continuous transition of densities. Okay, then I'm going to ask you, you got on screen now a fish tank. So it's got a membrane and it's got water which is uh, obviously he's made dense and putting sugar water or whatever. And yeah, sugar water. And the laser is outside. So he's got air, glass, and water. Yeah. Is that how we see in reality? Again, it's bending through the water. No, your demonstration doesn't, your demonstration is not demonstrating light refraction through the atmos plane because you are showing three different media. And you're claiming it's, it's not, it's demonstrating refraction based on Snell's yes. law with media. You're not changing yes. the medium in the Atmo. But, but the medium is changing density as a function of height. So that's just a factual piece of information. And I, I do want to press you on refraction because actually mm. the world record for the longest distance photograph ever taken was done by a Glober, by the way, who calculated it based on refraction. So he waited for the, the refraction. Share oh, we talk about this? Okay. What was that, Ryan? Can you end the screen share while uh, we talk about it? Oh, okay. We'll come back to it, but just so people can see us on the screen while we're... Oh, uh, they can't see it. Okay, gotcha. No, it's uh, all good. Yeah, yeah. So the world record for the longest photograph, like the longest distance photograph ever taken, right, 
he did it. He got the world record for this by calculating the refraction conditions necessary. He was looking at the weather, continuously updating it, and he waited because he had to hike up to a mountain in order to take this long distance photograph. It's like, you know, an absurd amount of distance. He has the world record. So any thing that flat earthers show, oh, this is too long, this doesn't work. This guy, he literally used the globe to do the math and to figure out when he needed to go take this picture based on the refraction conditions. So it, the math works. Um, you also, you were using the wrong Earth Curve calculator. Your Earth Curve calculator did not account for a refraction. Um, first of all, that takes uh, standard atmospheric refraction as a given. Uh, the guy, yeah, that's the, uh, he, he took both, he took both our calculators, uh, even um, <coughs> the advanced Earth Curve calculator, and it showed exactly the same. Um, but he actually, didn't measure refraction. Yes, yes, listen what I'm saying. When he took the other advanced Earth Curve calculator from Walter Bislin, it yep. gave exactly the same result because it takes automatically atmosphere, uh, standard refraction into account. Um, yeah, but the refraction wasn't standard in the in the video you were talking about. It wasn't again, measured. Again, it gives exactly the same hidden on Walter Bislin's just as it does in that because that one doesn't let you change the atmospheric oh. refraction. Walter doesn't let you change it because it's not based in reality. Now, I told you, it gives exactly the same values. Now, I'm going to share my screen again because I want yeah. to show you what refraction does in reality when we do actual observations. Now, you claiming refraction lifts up an object. So, this is what I love about demonstrations. We can demonstrate this every day that it takes things away. You see what it's doing to the object? No. It's causing no, this, it to this, go lower, not higher. Can you explain that? I have no idea what I'm looking at. There is this, this image doesn't look like anything. There's an object. Okay. There's a that yellow object. They're going to open uh -huh. the door and it's going to cause refraction and look how it's going down away. So in other words, the refraction is causing it to be worse, to make it look like it is curving, not taking your curve away. Notice that this is on the flat surface. They give all the temperatures and heights and everything just so you can see. And this has been demonstrated multiple times. Uh, you can do this on practically everything. Many people have demonstrated this. So yeah, it's been this goes against, yeah, so this goes against your claim it that refraction lifts up an object okay, it's been horizon. demonstrated Wait. by the world record photographer, the, the photographer who holds the world record for the longest distance photograph. He did all the calculations. They're on his website with the photograph. He did the calculations on a spherical Earth model in order to figure out when and where he needed to be to take that photograph and win the world record. So that, okay, you, okay, you're not I'm going to tell you again. Record. I'm going to tell you again. Do you know what a demonstration means? I just showed you demonstration that it does not do the uh, um, effects you claiming because he took a photo which debunks the globe and because he claimed refraction, it actually made it worse for the globe because it shows it is going down and because we can see it even further because of refraction based on demonstrations that refraction was just go down. Therefore, you claiming that it's making it go up is not a demonstration. So I want you to show me a demonstration where it shows it going up. Every single sentence you just said was wrong. And you need to say the opposite in order to be right. No, nope, right? I Refraction, stick by my statement. And you would stick to being wrong. It's, it's I not just a showed surprise. a demonstration on screen. I can show many more that give exactly the same effect. Okay. What you showed on screen was like the world's blurriest image. I got no idea what I'm looking at. I didn't see anything, to be frank with you. It, so, would just, it didn't look like anything to me. I'm not seeing it. 